Hey, so what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and uh, audio might be a little bit off here because I'm just using my onboard camera mic for this, but uh, I just kind of wanted to show you all this right here, so we're going to go ahead and turn this thing on. This is my Sega Saturn. This thing works normally, right? But it's one of those nights, honestly, I don't... I don't know, I kind of want to play games, but whenever I play a game, I can't stick to it, and I still want to do something gaming related, but I don't have the patience to play a game, so, uh, kind of one of those things where I was actually on YouTube, and, uh, this guy right here, which is, you can kind of see on the screen, uh, Adam Korlick, fantastic YouTuber, highly recommend checking him out, which I'm sure a lot of people who watch me, I'm sure also watch him, but he just did a video where he was restoring a Sega Saturn, I was like, you know... I have a Model 1 Sega Saturn that I literally have not done anything with, and it's broken. I bought it as is. Uh, so maybe this is the time to do something with it. So I'm just showing you my Saturn right here. Got my copy of uh, Clockwork Knight sitting in there as well, too. And the thing works, thankfully. So now I have two Saturns. Uh, I'm going to bring out the other one right here, but just making sure this thing works. And hooking it up to this mod right here through RGB SCART, through this little converter and all that. And phone has to go off, fantastic, but let's see. Yeah, no, everything seems to be working, so this thing works just fine. That's all I had to show. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and... I just want to make sure all this got set up, it was working and all that, like the, I don't know, uh, video input, output, all that stuff. Uh, we're going to try out the broken Saturn and see how that is. Alright, so this is it right here, and no, I did not wrap it, like this literally came pre-wrapped and all that, so I saved the wrapping on this so, you know, we could unwrap this together, see how this is. Alright, bring it all out. And this is not only just a Model 1 Sega Saturn, it's actually a Japanese one, which is kind of what I was gunning after a Model 1. Uh, but then I found this deal on a Japanese Model 1, I said, you know what? Uh, I think that'll work out pretty well. So, I actually have not had any Japanese systems until recently, and you can see this is a pretty early one because the uh, fan vents and everything on the side there, but I have not had any Japanese systems until recently, right before I end up moving, so this is like pretty much at the end of 2015, uh, I ended up buying a bundle of systems, and it was a Japanese, it was from Arizona, of all places, I guess they somehow got there, but it was a Japanese Xbox 360, GameCube, and Saturn, and they were all being sold as broken or as is. Now, the GameCube, all I did was refurbish that thing, and I actually installed a mod chip in there, so I used that for our mod chip tutorial. I'm just going to throw this over to the side, uh, and I'm going to do a region mod on it later on. Uh, for this right here, I think they said that it had some trouble reading discs, I'm not sure. And in the 360, I was hoping it would be an easy issue. No, it was a uh, red light. So I actually sent that off to Johnny because I was like, I'm, I'm going to be hands off on that. I'll let him do it and I'll pay him for that. But we have this right here. It's actually, this thing is in really good condition. Now, I have not gone into the Saturn until recently and I've known about it for years. And I thought it was a really fascinating, fantastic system. So let's go ahead, you know, take out, this is a Model 2 right here. I'm going to go ahead, unplug everything right here. And the reason why I also showed you all this as well is because I have an action replay, and uh, this will actually allow me to, it's a save card, it's a RAM expansion, and uh, it actually allows import play as well too. So because I don't own any Japanese Saturn games, uh, but I have physical European, not European games, excuse me, uh, physical what is it, uh, American games, I'll be able to play them on the Japanese system as long as it works, so we're going to make sure everything works out right here. I know people are yelling at me that I put the uh, <laughs> the uh, the bottom of the disc right here. Listen, it's it's going to be fine if I do that. If I like smudge it around everywhere, then it might scratch up a little bit, but you can get it resurfaced. It's not really that big of a deal. So let's go ahead, unplug all this stuff take this out so out with the new in with the old and possibly broken we're gonna see how this is right here so again just using RGB SCART and by the way this is actually ridiculous what they did right so uh, the video cable here it looks almost identical to a Sega Genesis cable it's not if you try and shove a Sega Genesis cable in there it might work but it just it doesn't feel like it's supposed to go in so I've never actually tried you know to completely put it in all the way Giggity, you can make a lot of sexual new windows there, I guess. But let's see, we have that. We'll have the power right here, which I'm actually going to run over to the other side. This is going to be a really casual kind of just me talking, not really editing too much video, unless there's a ton that I need to edit. So let's see. Actually, we have run into an issue. 
Now see, this is how the Model 2 is set up. It has kind of this squared off part right here and then a circular one. This one is just dual circular, so it looks like a PlayStation, PlayStation 2 cable could fit in there. Let me see if I have one of those. All right, and after about a minute of looking, I was able to find a cable that should fit, so let's see. Yes, fits perfectly. Awesome, we'll be good to go on that. Eh, we can run the cables on whatever side, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, and then last thing we need, controller, controller, that's it. Oh, also let me check this. So this is a cool thing as well too. Uh, there's a drive door back here, not a drive door, but just this door that has a battery in there. Battery's probably dead. I do not have a VCD card in there, okay? So they did not include it in. Uh, but overall, this thing is in pretty good shape and everything. It might be in a little better shape than my Model 1, to be honest, aside from, you know, that being kind of worn down. But the uh, disk drive just completely pops open, reset power button oh we do get power we do get power okay let's see what's going on awesome and it is completely Japanese so let me go ahead turn that off I will ugh, plug in this thing right here this is the controller also this is probably gonna freak out a lot of people but just uh, check this out check out this controller is this not like one of the craziest controllers you've seen now get this this is actually a really comfortable controller, so uh, I recommend this one. If you can track it down, definitely get the 3D controller. But anyways, let's turn this thing on, see how all it works. Because before I want to work on anything here, I want to make sure everything actually works, so... And see what the issue is. Okay. And different splash screen right there, awesome. Okay, cool. Well, all that's working just fine, so let me go ahead and let's see, plug in the action replay. And also there is something else I want to try. Actually, you know, we'll just try the action replay right here, see what's going on. Pop this in, turn everything on. Now, it sounds like the disc is spinning up, that's good. I'm not gonna know how it works yet until, because as you can see, action replay is taken over. So now we're gonna try and boot up the game. Thankfully, this is in English. I actually know what everything is. It should not take that long to, to boot up the game. Uh, access lights coming on, and it does not sound like the disc is spinning. Kind of sound like it spun up a bunch and then it kind of just gave up and now the access light is blinking at me. So we now know this thing does not load up games. So we're going to have to figure out what the hell is going on with it. Now it does spin them. Let me double check this again. No, I can't even look in the drive door there. Okay, so I can confirm it is spinning them, but let's try that again. Hmm. It just sounds like it keeps trying, but it's not going through. All right, now, not really a game, but I also tried a Logic's album right here, which I was going to make a joke and say, you know, because of content ID, I can't play any of it. But, unfortunately, I can't really make that joke, even though I told you all, because, uh, try it out, and it does the exact same thing. Makes all the noises and everything. Let's see. And the reason why I tried this is because I've had the issue sometimes before where it will try other types of media. And yeah, no, again, everything is spinning up, but it doesn't even let me play any of the disc here. So in case you don't know, you can listen to audio CDs on this. So uh, we'll, we'll have to see what's going on with it, I guess. But uh, good news is it's spinning up. Bad news is it could be a laser issue. We'll see what the hell the issue is. All right, now, as you can see right here, we've kind of uh, benched the whole Saturn. So I opened it up, but I have it plugged in so that it's still, you know, able to run everything. And the weirdest thing, so the power supply is on the top of the system, the top shell, and it's not on the bottom like, you know, you see it on other systems or even other versions of the Saturn. But here's the crazy thing, like this little notch right here, the whole thing I looked at it and I was like, this assembly doesn't look right because it was like, it was bent. Like, it was like my hand was like bent like that, like it was bent. And I'm like, if it's supplying power and this whole board is the power board, I don't think that's supposed to be bent. 
So what I did was I noticed this right here was underneath, so I just moved the clip over and now it's flat again, it's flush, it's good to go. Uh, that didn't affect it before, so I don't know, and there's no way I could have done that. Like, there's no possible way um, I could have done that while opening it up, so we're going to see. Now, what I did right here was, this is normally a piece that kind of just, you know, covers up everything. Now, I did take that off. And right now I'm just, you know, testing it with a regular music CD because music CD is region free. And also at the same time, uh, this thing can play music CDs without an issue. Now here is something I noticed, right? Uh, the laser here, it seems to be moving around and it picks up everything just fine. But uh, for some people that might be a little savvy, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and see if you all notice the issue that I think is the issue at least. And just in case this thing miraculously works, let me go ahead and boot into the Saturn itself. Okay, it doesn't. So, as you can see, it stops, but here is the weird thing, right? I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and I'll just go ahead and reset this just to show you all. So, what you want to do is pay attention to the laser right there. Now, okay, it's moving up and down, it's moving around, all that stuff seems, you know, normal enough for a laser, right? Here's the weird thing with that, um, well, not even weird, but what I believe is it doesn't look like the laser is working at all because normally what happens is when you put a disc there, even through the disc, you're going to see a little red thing. And uh, the redness that you're seeing is not from a laser, it's from the access light right there, just reflecting right over here. Uh, but no, normally you see a red, like a red little beam that's going through the disc. And uh, this time there's nothing like that. So uh, then again, this is also my first time messing with the Saturn right here. But uh, what I want to do is I want to try and pot tweak the laser. But if that's not it, I think the laser is just bad and we're going to have to replace that. So uh, let's try pot tweak first off. And if you don't know what a pot tweak is, essentially I'm going to reduce the uh, resistance that the uh, that is between the laser and the board what is allocated and sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't honestly i don't have high hopes for working because it doesn't look like the laser is trying to read anything like it's moving around and it's doing all the actions that the board and everything is telling it to do and it's programmed uh, but with the actual laser itself there's no light or no beam coming from it or anything like that so it's a laser without a laser that's so depressing Alright, so what I've been doing here, I've tried uh, messing around with the potentiometer on here and all that, and I I'm just going to say this big disclaimer, uh, I haven't been using a multimeter, I know some people are going to yell at me about it, but honestly, I didn't care too much about the laser on here, uh, it looked like it was pretty much dead, so I've tried it, you know, a few ways, and uh, every single boot, no matter what happens, uh, you know, this thing will spin up, it will slow down, and it will spin back up a bunch, and uh, I either get one of two things on screen, I either get one, uh, a disc empty or, you know, uh, please insert CD air or two, uh, after, you know, it does that big spin in the menu, like the, after the splash screen in the actual menu, it says that the CD has one track and it is 728 minutes, 14 seconds. So, uh, yeah, no, neither of those are the result that we're looking for. So unfortunately, I think this laser is just gone for whatever issue. Uh, honestly though, if you're going to potentiometer tweak, if you're going to, uh, you know, tweak your laser and all that. It helps. I mean, it definitely will make the laser work if you can get it to work. The only thing is because you are going to bring, you know, less resistance to your laser, there's going to be more power going to it. And because there's that, unfortunately, that also means that you can kill your laser later on as well, too. So you're just kind of, you know, shortening your laser's life cycle to get it working sooner. So that's that's the best way I can put it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a new laser, a new one of these right here. Uh, I've seen them on eBay just now. Um, there's actually another YouTuber who, his name is the Segaholic. He is... He's small, I think he has a few hundred subs or something, but he has some excellent videos related to this stuff, so they've really entertained me. Uh, but he is like addicted to getting older Sega, Sega equipment and repairing it and all that. Uh, and he had about the same issue, except he was able to fix his with a pot tweak. Uh, me, not so much, and uh, normally I don't try tweaking lasers, to be honest, even when I fixed up other systems. I don't like laser tweaking, I'll just replace the laser. If I don't replace the laser, I'm gonna replace the drive. Unfortunately with this, 
can't really replace the drive assembly as easy as on new like newer systems where it's just a big drive and you swap it out you swap boards and you're done uh, so what I'm gonna do is this laser right here it's a JVC laser I'm going to pick one up on eBay they're a little over 20 bucks but that's really not too bad so I'll pick one up and then I'll go ahead drop it in here and see if it works All right, so it has been probably, what, uh, maybe two weeks or so, a week and a half, two weeks, but uh, as you can see right here, I did get my laser. This cost me about $20, $25, I believe. It's brand new laser, optical pickup, all that fun stuff, and it's the uh, Optima 6S. Now, we have this right here, which I've taken apart partially. I now have the laser itself off here, so, as you can see, that is the actual laser itself that we will be replacing. I went ahead, you know, I took the guardrail off, I unhooked it, and uh, the things I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to take this gear right here, the black gear, and put it on this laser, I believe. Uh, and on this laser right here, I'm also going to have to desolder uh, one of the soldering balls. So, uh, in case you don't know, if you've never done a laser replacement, which I'm sure a lot of people here have not done, uh, which is nothing wrong with that, but I'll kind of try and show you. So, right here, I'm going to try my best to zoom in decently. Here in the corner, you're going to see two dots right there, right? Now, those two dots on a brand new laser are one because they have been, as you can see, you can see my finger in detail there, but those two dots right there actually have a solder glob on them. And on a brand new laser, that solder glob is there. That is a... It's essentially an anti-static blob, and it's put there to short those two points because that means when it's being shipped and all that, when it's outside the system and not being used, there's not going to be any static buildup. However, that also means you cannot use the laser. So what I need to do is take out the new laser, desolder those two points. I'm going to have to pull out the soldering iron and just desolder those two points, and then put the new, uh, put the new laser right here in the Saturn, and uh, hopefully that should be the issue, because it looks like all the other gears and everything else, like everything works on the system, you know, the spindle works, the motor works, the gears are fine, it's just I can't read any discs properly, so we'll see what happens. And if that thing breaks, whatever, it's it's already broken. I just need to get a part off it. All right, so right here I have the new laser, and what I just did was, you might see it looks a little bit like gummy right there. I actually end up using some flux. I just got this, like, nice new Kingbow flux. This stuff is awesome. Johnny Guns uh, always recommends it, and first time ever using it, it worked out great. Uh, I just put a little bit on the... Uh, uh, on the point right there that need to be desoldered and I didn't even need the desoldering braid actually I just ended up uh, touching my soldering iron to it melting it so I was able to separate the two points But I did take the desoldering braid. I put it on there. I heated up just to clean it up a little bit so uh, You know the new laser it seems to be working fine at least so far it looks fine It just it smells kind of funky, but I'm assuming that's because it's new and this is the old laser right there So that's the junk this is the new one as you can see I already put the uh, the gear back on there So we're gonna go ahead and install this back into the Saturn and see what happens All right, and we got the laser back in so I had to just notch it up right there put the bar back in line it up And uh, if I moved around a little bit, let's see Seems to move around just fine, so uh, let's go ahead and, you know, again, completely put it back together, and um, I'll put that on nicer and test out a game. All right, so uh, we have the Saturn up and running right here. Let's go ahead. First off, I'm not going to try a game. I'm going to try uh, System of a Down's first album. Let's see if it works. I... I hear it spinning. Oh, that actually... Did you all see that? Hold on, I'm going to do this again, okay? I'm opening it, closing it right now. That detected the ta table of contents super quick, so I have high hopes for this. Let's uh, try listening to it. And even though I muted it right there because of copyright issues, I guarantee it did work. So, uh, unlike, you know, when I was playing the Logic CD on the other laser, it took a while for that to load. This one loaded like, I mean, again, just check this out. Close right now. That was like three seconds right there. So now what I'm going to do is, because I don't have any Japanese games at the moment, uh, I'm going to put in my action replay, try an American game, and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to show you all this from beginning to end. So uh, right here, we're going to go ahead and turn on the Saturn. And I hear the disc spinning up. All right, so it boots up. We already know it works. We established that already multiple times. It uh, boots up the action replay right here. 
and start game. Start game with no cheats enabled. I hear it chugging. Ah, there we go. Okay, we never got to that screen before. At least to my knowledge, I don't remember getting to it. And let's see. Ah, there we go. It works. So uh, I have my Japanese Sega Saturn now working. So uh, I'll even show you all the game right here. Let's see. Uh, can I skip this? Can I skip this? Maybe? Yes. All right. Come on. Come on. There we go. Nights into Dreams. So uh, my copy of Nights into Dreams is now working on here. And this is an American version running on a Japanese Model 1 now with the uh, action replay cart in it and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean this thing up. I'm not going to show that, but I'm going to go ahead and clean it up, put it back together and everything. And we're good to go on this. I also do need to replace the battery in here. So I'm going to get a battery replacement. But I also ordered another one of these for my other Saturn. So we have that up and running now. So I'm quite happy that we got this working. So, uh, you know, more of the story if you have a Saturn that has a issue like that uh, normally these things are pretty good but uh, twi try pot tweaking it although pot tweaking isn't gonna be the most reliable thing because you're just going to kill the laser faster it'll be working but temporarily but uh, replacing the laser you all saw like it just it took a few minutes you do need to have a soldering iron right here but aside from that took a few minutes once that was done you know it worked perfectly so anyways this is mr mario signing off thank you all for watching everyone very happy this thing is working now so i'm glad i was able to show you all this thing up and running